highlights of the Mount Union Heidelberg pregame on ladies and gentlemen on WHEI TV 10 and WHEI 88.9. I'm joined with co-host today Dan Hartzell. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Scott? It's good to be here. I feel good. There's a large, uh, there's a lot of vibe on campus today. Oh, it's a great vibe. It's, great vibe. It's the I was awoken to the tailgating. Yes, when I was leaving women's basketball practice last night, uh, the tailgaters were already starting to set up at 8 p.m. I saw that too. It's a uh, big game, number one, Mount Union uh, University versus number nine, Heidelberg University. Let's recap the seasons real quick. Recapping the uh, Mount Union uh, season, we got, they went to Muskingum and won 37-0. to At home against Marietta and won 84-14. to They went to Ohio Northern and won 58-7. Took on Wilmington and won 62-0. to Went to Capitol, won 58-3. And another game that Heidelberg absolutely destroyed recently. They went to Otterbein as well. 48 to nothing. Big shutouts for the Mount Union defense, and that's going to be a factor against Heidelberg today. Right. I think you're going to see a, a, definitely a tale of two defenses here um, where Mount Union has really stymied their opponents. Where Heidelberg, even though some of the scores happen in the latter part of the games, um, I think you're, what you're going to see there is whichever defense plays well today, that's who's going to remain victorious. Yeah, you're right. Or undefeated. You're right. Uh, recapping for Heidelberg, uh, first game of the year was Ohio Northern here, 55-27. Uh, Heidelberg walking away victoriously. Uh, Wilmington College, 66-12. to At Marietta, 68-17. to Capital University homecoming game, 73-17. to And I have to add, too, that at that Capital game, we took three, na- uh, three knees uh, basically at the goal line and kicked field goals. So that could have right. been a lot more severe than uh, what, what it ended up contradictory to what the forum stated correct yes um and then we have otterbein at otterbein 35 to 17 who uh, mount union had just beat 48 to nothing last week right and at muskingum 49 to 21 which was close at the beginning um but muskingum had two late scores there at the end versus our third string so i think what you're going to see here is heidelberg has given up some points this year where Marietta has really only given up 24 points this year. Right. So, I mean, we've got when you look at it, you got three shutouts from Mount Union. They're number one in the country. Their defense is astounding. It's going to be key for quarterback Michael Meese and Cartel Brooks, which that's where we have advantage is the rushing game as uh, Heidelberg. It's going to be key for us to be able to pierce that defense in ways that nobody else has. So let's go into this. we got both of the teams going 6-0 in conference play. Heidelberg at the top with 56.9 points per game, Mount 53.9 points per game, both in the top 10 in the nation in that. Heidelberg's averaging 540.3 yards per game, Mount 544.7 per game. Let's do some verses here, though. We got Michael Meese at quarterback for Heidelberg, Kevin Burke for quarterback at Mount. Michael Meese is averaging 215.3 yards per game passing, and Kevin Burke 238 yards per game passing, but he's also a dynamic quarterback. Uh, gets around in the pocket and also is scrambled for 82.6 yards per game. Yeah, and I think uh, Kevin Burke is probably the key to Mount Union's success. Yes. Um, even though they have a, a good good uh, rushing group um, with Heidelberg transfer in their Germany Woods, um, I think the key to the game is the containment of Kevin Burke for the Heidelberg defense. It absolutely is. And the, the thing that's so hard about containing him is he has the ability – to scramble in the pocket and give his receivers extra time to get open, which is just completely dynamic, and we see it at all levels of football, adds to a team like Braxton Miller for Ohio State on a more national, global level there. Um, But the fact that he's also gone for 82.6 yards per game rushing, that makes him their top rusher, which would give us an advantage, you would think, in the rushing game because we got Cartel Brooks with 154 yards per game who doesn't go down easy after one tackle or one hit. No, and I think the, the one of the dynamics that Heidelberg has incorporated into their offense here um, as the weeks have progressed is getting Cartel more out of the backfield and not taking the handoff, but looking for maybe a little bubble screen or, or a play-action screen uh, you know, coming out of the backfield. So he's definitely shown that he, he, he has you know, hands that are capable of making a tough catch and getting some uh, rack yards. And, um, but I think you know, for, with, with Mount Union and Kevin Burke, you know, one of the things that you look in, in Mount Union's team's past is their offensive line. Yeah. Um, and, and, and on our coaching staff, we have two offensive linemen of the year for Mount Union. Uh, back in the heyday, Coach Hallett and uh, Jason Lewis were both Division III um, offensive line players of the year. So you know that Mount Union incorporates that into their game plan fairly well. 
Um, they've got a great offensive line for Burke to stand behind, but they also know that when the things break down in the pocket that he is able to uh, scramble and uh, you know kind of get into it. Yeah, he is. And the big thing is if the defense gets after Burke, they have to contain him quickly. Uh, Burke is one of those quarterbacks that once he gets on a roll, he's going to go the whole game. You, you have to contain him quickly and see what you can do. But then where you see the advantage is the rushing game for us. He's only He's got 82.6 yards per game, and as a quarterback, that's good. If you contain that today, they haven't been tested like a Heidelberg defense. Then they got to give the ball to Bradley Mitchell, who's only averaging 500, or I'm sorry, 57.5 yards per game. Right, and he's he's their leader, and they've got three other guys in that backfield that they can, uh, you know, hand the ball off to, but none of them over, you know, 50 yards per game. So I think, you know, the, the big tail of the tape will be if our defensive backs are making – a majority of the tackles, that means that Burke has broken free. Their linebackers and outside linebackers have not done a good job of containment. Right. And this is going to be – it's going to come down to who sc- who gets in that – who gets to the red zone the most and goes on and scores. Going to receiving now, looking at this, we got Dante Dye, who has made some amazing catches throughout the year covering their games. 77.3 yards per game on average. Jack Nichols, the top receiver for Mount Union, at 71.7 yards per game. Ryan Fisher, second for us, at 48.3 yards per game game and Brian Gaynor 56.7 yards per game for Mount Union how important is the receiving aspect of this game well it's definitely huge uh, for Heidelberg right um, for the pure fact that coming into the game uh, Michael Meese is a very good quarterback um, he's got some growing to do that's for sure but I think we can say that of all the players but I think Mount Union is definitely going to come in and key on Cartel Brooks right so that puts the ball in Meese hands a little bit more than probably anticipated and probably than he's had to do in a lot of the games. I think the big factor is is that our wide receivers, and not just led by Dante Dye, is that we've had some other players step up and have some big games as well. And now that you add the factor of Cartel coming out of the backfield and being able to uh, make some plays there on a play-action pass or you know bubble screen, something of that nature, I think that adds into our game plan as well. That'll be a big factor if they can mix that between when Cartel goes for a rush and when Cartel goes out for a short screen or a little cut over the center of the field. Anything like that is going to help them th- throw off the Mountain Union defense versus run it down their throat, which which Heidelberg can't do against this team that they're playing today, number one in the nation, Mount Union Raiders. So when you look at that, I believe that the Heidelberg University team has an advantage in the rushing aspect of it. It's going to be really important for uh, – for Cartel Brooks to be very physical out there. He hasn't gone down after the first time he's reached contact out there all season. His yards after his yards after contact are amazing. I think that's a key today. Well, I, I agree with that. And I think one of the things to look at, too, is you look at Cartel Brooks from last year. Cartel set the, the Heidelberg school rushing record and was injured basically at the last two games. So uh, had he not been injured, that record would have been a lot higher. So I think coming into this game, you know, I'm sure he's a little beat up, a little banged up. Um, after seven games, you know, with uh, with as many carries, you know, 121 carries that he has this year, um, I think the big thing is is Cartel's coming into this game healthy. Yes, he's not exactly 100 percent, but he's as near as he's better than he was last year at this time. So I think that's going to be huge coming out of our backfield. I also think that when we did play Capital, um, and Capital ha- is a very good up and coming football team, very young. Um, but we threw five touchdowns that game. So the passing game is there. It's shown the capabilities of doing that. And I think that mixture, along with some pressure, if we can get some pressure on Burke, you know, up front with Ben Poirier and and, and some of the linebackers, I think we're going to be fine. Yes, and that's that's the big key is pressure on Burke and use our strengths. Um, You see Cartel Brooks. I mean, he's also coming off a hot game against Otterbein where he – shattered Heidelberg University records, which is awesome, which goes leads right into the atmosphere of today and the atmosphere of the Heidelberg University football season. Like I said, I awoke to the tailgating today. That was basically my alarm clock. Heard the old, take those old records off the shelf. Uh, woke me up, people screaming. People have been tailgating since 8 o'clock last night. It's going to be a fun time out there. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, we had a great crowd here for the homecoming game against Capital. Yeah. But I think this just, this this triples it. This surpasses it immensely. Um, I know they're anticipating over, you know, 6,500 people here. And uh, the atmosphere here on campus since we've moved the home games back to Meyer Field has just been outstanding. And when you've got number one versus number eight in the nation coming in and it's right in your backyard, 
Um, if you're a student at Heidelberg and you're not at the football game today, then shame on you. Yeah, what are you doing? Right. I, I think it's huge. And, and we've got people coming out of the woodworks, alumni coming out of the woodworks for this game, and I think that's amazing. That goes right into what I was going to talk about next. The home field advantage plays a big factor in big, big stadiums most of the time. But what about this game? We have a, you know, it's a Division three game. It's not like it's, you know, the horseshoe or anything like that. But we're expecting over 6,500 people. We brought in extra stands. What does home field advantage play here for Heidelberg? Well, I think, you know, coming in, if I'm Mount Union, I know one that I'm number one in the nation. Everybody, I have the hugest target on my back every week, week in, week out. Right. So it really doesn't matter if it, you know, you have a comfortability level when you're at home. But when you're away, you know that the underdog usually gets the applause. Uh, Heidelberg coming in is, is not a huge underdog, but the underdog nonetheless. So I think, you know, I don't want to say home field advantage doesn't come into play, but I think in our situation and with the experience that Mount Union has of taking number one, taking everybody's A game all the time, I don't know if it comes into factor. I think it will to a certain extent. To a certain extent, it will when you hear the cheers. I mean, it gets loud. You're going to be able to hear it from your dorm room if you're staying on campus. It will get loud there, louder than it will be all season. And I think you're right in the regard that a lot of eyes around the nation are going to have, especially those teams competing in the top 25 in Division Three, are going to have their eyes on this game as much as they can. They're definitely pulling for us. The pressure is on Mount Union, and this is looking at a historic season uh, for Heidelberg. This is the last home game. Uh, what do you expect to see out there? Well, what I expect to see is, is one, I, I expect to see the orange and black faithful. Um, I expect it to see, you know, it's a blackout today for Heidelberg University. Got, uh, my, got my black suit on. Got my black T-shirt on. Uh, <laughs> Men in black. Right, real classy. Um, but I think it's, it's definitely going to be a great collegiate atmosphere. I think, like you said, there's a lot of implications, win or lose this game for Heidelberg University. Um, and if there's a team to do it, it's the team that we have now not taking anything away from the alumni in the past or the incoming people, but this is the team. This is the year. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to come down to the last possession. Uh, I would agree with that statement. And I believe, you know, um, I'm not going to make a prediction uh, just for the pure fact that, that I have a ton of respect for our football coaches. Yep. And I want our guys out there to give their best effort, you know, when they step across that white field or the, the sideline and give everything that they've gotten, and I know they will because yeah. this is something that the seniors have been looking forward to. The upper, the underclassmen are starting to understand that this is the game. This is it. We have rivalries with everybody in our OAC, but this is the game. And, again, if you're a student at Heidelberg University and you're not at the game, shame on you. Go to it. Make sure you get there. It's free for us. Okay, one last thing we'll talk about before we kick it over to WHEI TV 10. We uh, – interesting statistic today I'm going to ask you this I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction and I'll weigh into is there a difference is it going to make a difference when we have red zone percentage for Heidelberg University being 94 percent conversion versus the 79 percent conversion from the red zone for the Mountain Union Raiders well I think that's a that's a definite stat that you have to look at right throughout the game um, the one thing that I like about our red zone and I don't have Mountain Union stats in front of us is our kicker Danny Kilger does a great job with the field goals uh, long distance field goals so I think that that does come into play but I think if we can continually get it down there and make progress and we're at 94 percent I think our coaches have some good magic uh, going on in that red zone and they do a great job of play calling and our offensive line really digs down deep um, during those situations so you know whether you move the ball 15 yards 30 yards 60 yards it's that red zone that matters, and I think that, yep. that is a huge stat for us, and it could become a, a huge factor in this game. You being a golf coach and me being one of your golfers, that's like what do you do around the short game area, right? Oh, well, with our golf team, we say a lot of prayers. Yeah. Uh, I drink a lot. And, uh, <laughs> no, um, it is. It's all about th – that's where the money's made. Yes. Um, you know, in the same way with football, um, the green is the end zone. Um, you know, the cup is the touchdown. And uh, I think the big thing is is, is getting there – is, is half the battle scoring is the rest of it right and, and that's the ultimate goal and that's the end all you know yeah. getting down there and getting stopped on the five yard line is not a win Correct. you know getting down there and scoring that's the win right exactly and that's where i think heidelberg has an edge in what they've been able to do playing roughly the same teams they've converted more often now it could come down to the kicker um that difference we have there 
But that is a huge factor to me that you've got to give them an edge to, to to win this game. So it's been a great season so far. We've got a minute to wrap it up here. Final thoughts on the Heidelberg season coming to this point. Uh, you know what? I think it's been a great season. Um, I, I have to give uh, so much respect to Coach Hallett and his staff for the work that they do uh, from where this program was when I was, was younger and uh, to where it is now has just been tremendous. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it goes to say without the guys that have years past bought into the system and continued to push that system on the incoming kids and continued that tradition. And I hope Heidelberg football is a force to be reckoned with for years to come. I do. And I, I want to give a shout out to all the players and everybody out there. You see them out there right after class to go into practice and working hard. And you see them in the lobbies of the dorm room studying together, working together on projects and whatnot. It's a good uh, breath of relief from everything you know we see at the top levels of college football. It's pure football. And they have committed themselves this season and they've been successful doing it. So that's going to wrap it up for us. Dan, we're going to be back here in about three, five minutes to give our final predictions after we flip it over to WHEI TV 10. So let's take it there right now. You can catch us back on the radio in about 10 minutes. Let's flip it over to WHEI TV 10 with Jimmy Flint and Dan Klish. Welcome back. Uh, Dan, the Coach Dan Hartzell, I got a bone to pick with these guys because they showed you so much love that I could see this getting bigger over there. I, hopefully it's not. Uh, you know, the camera adds 37 pounds, so yeah. uh, we don't need that any more of that, you know. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. I love doing this stuff. Uh, you know, I've really, really had conversations with Jimmy or Dan, and I'd love to. Um, I think what we do here, uh, one of the big things I love about Heidelberg University is the communication center and the great job that they do under here over here. It's one of the most underrated facets of our campus. Yes. And I think they do a great job. They're insanely talented people over there. I think you're insanely talented. Although over the radio, when we're not simulcasted, you are 32 with beach blonde hair and chiseled abs. So right. Well, the chiseled abs are hidden by this black T-shirt. That's so. true. It's kind of blending in there with the, with the background. Right, exactly. But anyway, they wanted our official predictions before we kick it to the field, in which we're very excited to go down. I know you don't want to call the game. Go ahead and make a prediction on what you think makes the differences, uh, what you believe is going to happen today, fold out there on Meyer Field. Well, I believe it's going to be 17 to 14, Heidelberg University. Oh, he made the prediction. I did. I did. I think it's, you know, I, I think both defenses are going to come ready to play today. And I think that's going to be the difference in the game. I think our red zone is going to be effective. I think Mount, Mount Union's red zone is going to be effective. But I think the key is, I think we have a great special teams on both ends of the field. And uh, I'm going 17 14, Berg. Defense is going to be a huge factor out there today. We know that. I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction as well. I'm going to go 21-17, the Berg victory. We've said it out there, and they credit us for saying it. If there is a squad that's ever played for Heidelberg University that can pull this off, it's us. I completely agree. And and like I said, I have, I have tons of respect for our football coaching staff. I see the hours that they put in and the hours that I don't see put in. So I know what they put into this, and it's their heart and soul. It's their time away from family. It's a commitment to Heidelberg University football and it's a commitment to Heidelberg University and making their players better men. And I think that's going to go well for us. So I think, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to get down to the field. Um, I appreciate you guys having me on. I enjoy doing this. Uh, we have a great time doing the tackle box on Monday nights. Yep, at 8 o'clock. Shameless uh, plug. Yeah, shameless plug. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I think it's going to be too. a great atmosphere. It is going to be a great atmosphere. It's already been a great atmosphere all week down there. Um, it, it's a lot like you know when you see college game day that craziness has finally hit Heidelberg University and as a smaller school it can be hard to hit that but we've become a, a family as an entire university that I know that team out there that's taking the field today is a family and coach Hallett is all of their dads just as you are for us golfing um, which can be a difficult task at times I, I will admit I wouldn't have it any other way that's true so that's, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. We got a 17-14 Heidelberg prediction and a 21-17 Heidelberg prediction from me, from me. For Dan Hartzell, I'm Scott Carpenter. You can catch me, Jimmy, and Dan at the halftime show on WHI TV 10. This has been a simulcast from WHI 88.9 and WHI TV 10. For Dan Hartzell, I'm Scott Carpenter. So long, everybody, and go Berg.